Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and today I'm creating a traveler's notebook insert using some of these new products from Ranger. This is the Letterit line and then also the Country Blooms stamp set from Honeybee Stamps. And so to begin with, I have a sheet of 110 pound uh, white cardstock and this is going to be my cover. So I wanted to use a heavier cardstock and I'm going to use my trimmer to first score this down the center, so at five and a half. And I'm just using a bone folder and my trimmer to score that and folding it in half. And then I can um, crease that line with the bone folder. You could do this just by folding it in half, but this just gives you a nice fold line. And then I'm going to put this in my trimmer and cut it down to four and a quarter. So this notebook will be four and a quarter wide by eight and a quarter tall, which will fit in a standard sized um, cover, I believe. And then I'm going to do some hand lettering. So I have my T ruler here and I'm going to create a line. That way I make sure that my hand lettering is straight. And I'm just going to hand letter the word January. So this is going to be a notebook that I can take notes in as I work through my reading plan for January. And here's a look at the different tips that come on the lettering like medium pens and so there's two different packages I'm going to use the one that has the brush tip today and this has an ink kind of similar to embossing ink it's not quite as juicy and sticky um, but I can go ahead and letter right over the top of my pencil line and I'm going to emboss this word January so after you use this pen, you could go in with Perfect Pearls or embossing powder. If you're going to use embossing powder, you want to go in pretty quickly um, just because this dries a little bit quicker than using embossing ink. So you can see I went ahead and lettered that. My hand lettering is not anything fancy. I just kind of winged it. And I'm going to cover this with the uh, new silver tinsel uh, embossing powder. And this is a silver sparkly embossing powder. And uh, I will link all the products that I use down below. Most of these are new ones from the Letterit line that were sent to me by scrapbook.com. So thank you. Uh, I thought it'd be really fun to show you some different ways to use them. So I'm going in with just a dry paintbrush to clean up any places where I didn't want embossing powder. And that particular one has glitter in it and glitter gets everywhere. So just beware. Um, it does, there was glitter on my pants, on my workspace, there was glitter everywhere. So now I'm taking my heat tool and I'm heating up that embossing powder. It took a little bit longer because it's on this thicker cardstock, but you can see when it starts to transform into shiny um, metallic, that's how you know that it is melted. So I'm just heat setting that entire thing and you can see now I have this hand lettered word using those medium pens. So you can kind of pick and choose which um, tip works for whatever project that you're working on. And you can see just how sparkly that is. And to add uh, 2018, I'm going to go in with the new uh, metallic markers. But first I'll erase any pencil lines that maybe are uh, showing through from my embossing. I made sure that embossing was dry or cooled off first. And then I can go in underneath with those metallic markers. These are really nice. They have a bullet nib and the silver really matched well with the silver embossing powder. So I'm just gonna go in and hand letter that as well. There you go. And again, this will be used to take any notes um, as I work through the Beloved Society reading plan. Um, we're gonna be reading through the Bible in a year, so I'm gonna use this to take my January notes. So this is looking pretty plain, so let's jazz it up. I have some um, of these floral stamps from the uh, Country Blooms stamp set by Honeybee Stamps. And I'm going to prep by um, applying some of that EK Success powder tool because I'm going to emboss this as well. So I'm inking it up with the Letter It Embossing ink, and I really like this ink. It's um, pretty juicy and uh, it covers really well and so I have no problem getting the embossing powder to stick to it. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that down and you can see I'm also using the uh, stamp block that came from the Letterit uh, collection as well and it's big enough to hold even the largest stamp from this stamp set. So I really like the size of this block. I'm glad to have it in my collection. I have a variety of stamp blocks um, but I didn't have one that was quite this big um, that would work with some of these larger stamps. So this is a second 
type of bloom. And this stamp set has some floral bunches and then some individual flowers so you can kind of create your own bunches if you wanted to. But I was keeping it quick and simple. I'm now applying some of the gunmetal um, embossing powder from the line. And this is not quite black. It's gray, but it has kind of some brown tones to it as well. I don't know. It's really pretty and metallic. I was trying to stick with some uh, cooler wintry looking colors to go with the month of January. So that's kind of why I went with this instead of just straight black. And it has a little bit of a metallic sheen to it. And so I'm just brushing off any places where that embossing powder st stuck to the page that I didn't want it to. And then I'm always sure to dump that extra right back into the container before I heat that up. That way I don't accidentally bump that or spill it or make a mess because I'm kind of prone to that. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up uh, as well. And so again, this takes a little bit longer because it's on that heavier cardstock, but you can see once it starts to get shiny, that's when it is melted. And because this doesn't have glitter in it, it works a little bit better on finer detailed stamps like this. Um, but even with this particular embossing powder, you lose some of the detail just because embossing powder is a little bit thicker than if you were just to stamp in regular ink. Now to fill in these images, I'm going to use some of my um, Prima watercolors. I've gone ahead and taken mine out of the containers and put them in this Tim Holtz um, Distress Ink container. But I am using two colors. They are from the Decadent Pies and the Tropicals collection. And then that plastic piece at the top that I'm using as a palette, that actually comes in the tin to hold the mini ink cubes. So I will link all that down below. It's just a great way to store a whole bunch of watercolors all together. And to make these shimmery, I'm going to add a little bit of Perfect Pearls to these. So you may have seen me use Perfect Pearls in a recent video. This is just another way to use them. It's going to add a little bit of sparkle and sheen to my watercolors. The uh, Decadent Pies collection does come with some metallic watercolors, but if you didn't have metallic watercolors, this is a way to um, extend your watercolors into a whole new set, basically, just by adding those Perfect Pearls. So the great thing about heat embossing these florals is they now have kind of a raised edge and so it creates these little wells so they're super easy to watercolor since the color kind of sits and pools in those wells and so it's not bleeding all over the place and making a mess. You can really work um, right next to wet areas and not worry about the color bleeding. So I'm just going in and I'm only using blue and green. I'll come back in in a little bit here with some gold perfect pearls um, but I really wanted to keep this simple. This does not need to be a complicated project <laughs> at all. Um, I'm going to use it through the month of, of January and then it's probably going to get stuck on a shelf somewhere and not looked at for a while. So it doesn't need to take a lot of time. Um, I'm kind of varying some florals. I'm adding a light wash of blue. Others I'm going in a little bit darker just to kind of add um, some differences between the florals. And then I'm going in with all the leaves using the same green. And I'm not doing any shading or anything like that. Um, and once this dries, it'll have this really kind of metallic sheen to it because of the Perfect Pearls. So now you can see I'm taking the gold color Perfect Pearls and I'm just adding water to those and using them just like a paint to fill in the centers. And now I've gone ahead and covered my workspace and I'm just gonna splatter some of the same colors all over this. Um, this is just to fill in some of the blank places, but uh, there were also some areas where my embossing powder um, stuck that I didn't wipe it off. And so I wanted to kind of cover up those oopses. So I'm adding those colors. And then I also pulled the pewter and perfect pearls. That's that gray um, color you see at the top and I'm using that to add some splatters as well to tie in those grays. So I went ahead and set that aside and let it dry on its own. I didn't want to heat it up because I didn't want to reactivate the embossing powder but it didn't take very long to dry since I didn't use very much water. And now I have a stack of just plain copy paper. There's about 10 sheets here. You could fill this with graph paper or higher quality um, paper, whatever you want. But like I said, I'm just taking notes. So I just use plain copy paper, fold it in half, and then I can stick that into the booklet. 
Now to secure this, I'm gonna use a long-armed stapler because I have one, but you could very easily just um, sew down that spine or hand stitch it um, with some embroidery floss, whatever works for you. Um, I did go ahead and pick up a long-armed stapler just because I make a bunch of these, and so it just made sense for me. So I went ahead and just added two staples, and you can see I have tons of extra paper, but we're gonna go ahead and just use my trimmer to trim that off. And since I cut the, the front first, I know exactly where I need to cut um, to trim that down. So I went ahead and just trimmed off all those edges. And now I have this really pretty uh, customized notebook insert that I can use for my note taking. So I could do journaling in here if I wanted. I could add die cuts and all kinds of things. Um, but I hope that that was inspiring. Keeping it simple this month, nothing crazy. Um, check out the description box for links to all the products that I used today. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.